Air Naval Gunfire Liaison Companies are airborne fire support and liaison units of the United States Marine Corps. The mission of ANGLICO is to provide Marine Air Ground Task Force commanders a liaison capability to plan, coordinate, and conduct terminal control of fires in support of joint, allied, and coalition forces. Per this mission statement, ANGLICOs are not designed to support U.S. Marine Corps maneuver elements. Instead, the doctrinal purpose of ANGLICO is to provide fire support and coordination in support of units adjacent to the MAGTF. Overview The mission of ANGLICO is to plan, coordinate, and conduct terminal control of fires in support of joint, allied and coalition forces operating in, or adjacent to, the MAGTF battlespace. Although ANGLICO Marines are best known for their ability to control close air support CAs, they are equally well trained to employ ground and sea-based fires, to include cannon artillery, rocket artillery, precision-guided munitions such as GMLRS, and naval gunfire support. <laughs> ANGLICO organization Because ANGLICOs are designed to support non-USMC forces, they are divided into elements appropriate for each level of a foreign forces structure. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Company headquarters, division cell. The division cell serves as the senior USMC fires liaison between the MAGTF and the supported division headquarters. This team is led by the commanding officer of ANGLICO, a combat arms lieutenant colonel, the executive officer, a naval aviator, and approximately 15 marines and sailors from the company staff. Their equipment is geared towards planning and communication from a headquarters. This is by no means a desk job, however. During recent deployments to Afghanistan, company staffs have repeatedly engaged in direct combat with the enemy while visiting smaller teams. Ad hoc firepower control teams led by the JTACs and FACs at the company headquarters also supported high visibility operations. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Platoon Brigade. Often referred to as a brigade platoon, this unit supports a brigade of friendly forces, and as such is led by a major artillery officer and an experienced gunnery sergeant with an MOS of 0861, 8002. The staff is rounded out by an air officer a naval aviator, usually a senior USMC captain and a naval gunfire liaison officer NGLO. As with the company headquarters, this unit's equipment is geared toward command post operations vice tactical combat. Brigade platoon marines frequently form ad hoc FCTs in support of specific operations, and serve as combat replacements, augments for SALTs and FCTs. Because of their small size and the frequency with which they train together before deployments, brigade platoons develop distinct identities and tight-knit relationships. There are two brigade platoons in each active duty ANGLICO, and three brigade platoons in each reserve component ANGLICO. Topic. Supporting Arms Liaison Team Battalion. The Supporting Arms Liaison Team SALT is designed to provide a comprehensive fire support coordination capability for a supported battalion. A SALT consists of 18 Marines and Sailors, an 8-man SALT headquarters and two 5-man FCTs. The SALT leader is a naval aviator on a ground tour as a forward air controller FAC. These naval aviators are usually mid to senior captains who have completed several deployments. The SALT chief is a staff sergeant 0861, 8002. Though their primary mission is to provide fire support coordination to the supported battalion, the communication suite, planning capabilities, and experience of the SALT lends them well to jump COC operations and robust involvement in the non fires operations of the supported battalion. 
Each active and reserve brigade platoon contains two salts. Topic Firepower Control Team Company The Firepower Control Team FCT, pronounced FICT, is the basic unit of ANGLICO operations. By the Table of Organization and Equipment TO&E, there are two FCTs per salt. In practice, however, additional FCTs are often created based on the availability of joint terminal attack controllers, with each FCT being led by a JTAC. Because FCTs are frequently created on an ad hoc basis from the rest of the company, every scout observer and radio operator in ANGLICO is trained and prepared to serve on a FCT. There is also historical precedent for highly motivated support marines, logisticians, vehicle mechanics, etc. within ANGLICO to be trained and employed on a FCT. FCTs are led by junior to mid-grade captains, and sometimes Navy lieutenants of the same grade, who are qualified JTACs. While the TO&E allows for FCT leaders to hold any ground combat arms MOS, the vast majority of team leaders are artillery officers. The team chief is a sergeant, and usually is qualified as a Joint Fires Observer JFO. More experienced team chiefs frequently attend Tactical Air Control Party TACP school to obtain certification as a Joint Terminal Attack Controller JTAC. Team members include a senior radio operator 0621 corporal or sergeant, and frequently a JFO, a junior PFC LCPL 0861, and a junior 0621. Even this small team may be broken down further based on task organization, especially among MEU detachments. FCTs frequently operate as two teams of two to three Marines each, and it is not unheard of for ANGLICO Marines to operate individually while supporting Special Operations Forces SOF raids or MEU operations such as Visit, Board, Search, and Seizure VBSS. FCTs participate in ground combat operations alongside their supported unit, requesting and controlling air and fire support assets on the unit's behalf. This entails detailed integration with friendly maneuver units such as patrols and raids and defensive operations. Because of the team's experience and training, FCTs frequently advise supported company commanders on a broad range of fires and aviation-related matters. In the liaison role, MAGTF commanders use ANGLICO teams to understand their partnered units better. Similarly, the supported unit gains a better understanding of the operations of the adjacent MAGTF. <laughs> <laughs> Battlefield environment ANGLICO is never assigned its own physical battlespace as teams are constantly on the move. An ANGLICO inherits its OW from whichever unit it supports. A firepower control team in Iraq, for example, consists of no more than four to five men. The fifth man is needed to man the gun turret during a vehicle-mounted mission. The primary member is a forward air controller or a joint terminal attack controller a radio operator and artillery observer will compose two of the three remaining team members, with the last member often being a squad automatic weapon saw gunner. Even though each team member has their own specialty, ANGLICO Marines are all cross-trained within their team. This high level of training and proficiency is what makes ANGLICO units so effective. While ANGLICO units can perform many different tasks, close air support has been its primary mission in recent conflicts. There are a limited number of JTACs in Iraq, and arguably the most sought out, are from Marine Corps ANGLICO units. The Marine Corps JTAC school is one of the most academically challenging schools within the military, with unusually high standards. To pass this school, a JTAC candidate must successfully coordinate 14 missions with live aircraft, and pass three intense written examinations. ANGLICO teams have been working with all types of units in Iraq, from a typical Marine or Army infantry company to a SEAL or Iraqi Army unit. Their training at all levels allows them to easily be plugged into any environment. Most Iraqi units will have, on some level, an ANGLICO team assigned to them. 
Each year, ANGLICO teams train for several weeks with the British commandos. Topic: Training. ANGLICO units require Marines who are proficient in a wide variety of specialized military skills. In addition to their primary MOS training necessary to coordinate fire support, such as artillery fire support, field radio operations, direct air support operations, and naval gunfire spotting, 3rd, 4th and 6th ANGLICO Marines receive airborne training and jump qualification at Fort Benning's Army Airborne School, making the reserve ANGLICOs two of the handful of Marine Corps units in which Marines are jump qualified. ANGLICO Marines regularly receive further advanced training in other insertion methods, fieldcraft, SEER, and other specialized and demanding activities. This, combined with the fact that ANGLICO Marines and sailors routinely serve with and must cross-train with a wide variety of U.S. and Allied units around the world such as the British 148 Commando Forward Observation Battery, Royal Artillery, including recon and special operations units and foreign services, makes ANGLICO units among the toughest and most highly regarded in the Marine Corps. ANGLICO units can deploy as an entire company of 150 to support the large-scale operations of an entire Marine Expeditionary Force, or, more commonly, deploy in four to seven Marine and Sailor teams to support the activities of non-Marine units. <laughs> ANGLICO Basic Course ABC. Before deactivation in 1999, each ANGLICO ran their own in-house training program called ANGLICO Basic Course ABC. Historically, this was run by the 3rd Brigade Platoon, which was composed of Marines who had not yet passed ABC, and their instructional cadre. Since reactivation, operational tempo has largely precluded the re-establishment of this practice. Instead, ABC-like Courses targeting the entire company have been held in order to solidify manning decisions and level the playing field by giving all ANGLICO Marines regardless of MOS training in basic FCT skills. 2D ANGLICO re-instituted biannual ABCs in spring 2013. 2D ANGLICO has four purposes for ABC, 1 provide training and verification of a baseline skill level for all ANGLICO Marines, 2 provide BDE platoon commanders, sergeants information IOT make informed team building decisions, 3 foster unit cohesion and esprit de corps, and 4 identify and train support Marines as combat replacements. History The history of the ANGLICO dates back to World War II and the Pacific Theater OF operations when, in preparation for the island hopping campaign, realized there was a need to coordinate air, naval and artillery gunfire support between the Marines, Navy and Army created a Joint Assault Signal Company JASCO. it was attached to the 4th Marine Division and its first use was in the Marshall Islands during the assault on ROI Namur. Subsequently in the Marianas for the capture of Tinian and Saipan. They proved so effective that five other JASCOs were created The most famous JASCO unit is the 594th, for its actions during the Battle of Okinawa 1945 and the Philippines Campaign 1944 following the reorganization of the U.S. Armed Forces under the Department of Defense in 1947, the JASCO units were disbanded and their responsibility transferred to the U.S. Navy. In 1949, the Marine Corps began the process of recreating the JASCO capability under the new ANGLICO designation. ANGLICO, 2nd Signals Battalion, 2nd Marine Division, was formed in December, 1949 at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. 1st Marine Division formed a similar unit at the same time, designated ANGLICO, 1st Signal Battalion, 1st Marine Division. 
A third unit, 1st ANGLICO, Fleet Marine Force, Pacific, was activated on 2 March 1951 at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. The original ANGLICOs, created in both 1st Marine Division and 2nd Marine Division in December, 1949, continued to exist and serve in combat throughout 1950 and 1951 in the Korean War. These were the first ANGLICO units to stand up and serve in combat. Teams from these units served in combat attached to USMC battalions, Korean Marine battalions, and U.S. Army units. These ANGLICOs were entirely separate from the numbered ANGLICOs which first stood up in Hawaii in 1951, and predate those units by over a year. 1st ANGLICO activated Sub Unit 1 for duty in Vietnam in May 1965 where the unit was continuously deployed for eight years. Sub Unit 1's first commanding officer was Lieutenant Colonel George H. Albers. It was the only Marine Corps organization reporting directly to Military Assistance Command, Vietnam which assumed operational control of the sub unit in September 1966. Throughout its involvement in Vietnam sub-unit 1 NGLO and TACP teams operated in all four tactical zones and was the last fleet marine force unit to stand down from the war. Sub-unit 1 provided naval gunfire and close air in support of South Vietnamese Army and Marine units, South Korean Army and Marine units, Australian and New Zealand Armed Forces as well as United States Army and Marine Combat Divisions. While only an estimated 1350 men served the sub-unit over those eight years they contributed in no small way to almost every combat operation of the war. In March 1972 naval gunfire spotters directing fire from the gunline ships of the U.S. Navy provided the only counter-battery fires directed at North Vietnamese artillery raining ordnance all over First Corps in advance of the Easter Offensive. Unit strength at that time was only 107 officers and men both Navy and Marine who with their backs to the wall made up the numbers deficit by tenaciously providing around-the-clock support, in the late 1970s, under the leadership of LTCOL. James E. Toth, 2nd ANGLICO began experimenting with the concept of the "...universal spotter." A Marine trained to coordinate and control fires from artillery, naval gunfire, and close air support CAs. .Previously the organization of ANGLICO, USMC artillery and infantry units provided separate shore fire control party teams, artillery liaison and tactical air control party teams for the observation and control of supporting arms for both USMC and other forces maneuver units. The experimental concept relied on company-level teams known as Firepower Control Teams FCTs containing personnel and equipment to control fires for all supporting arms and battalion-level groups known as Supporting Arms Liaison Teams SALTs responsible for coordination of all supporting arms Renabled 2nd ANGLICO to greatly reduce the number personnel required to support U.S. Army and Allied units and streamlined the request for an approval of the delivery of terminal control of USMC and US USN supporting arms. The universal spotter concept was later adopted by all ANGLICOs and was the forerunner of today's Joint Terminal Attack Controller and Joint Fires Observers the early 1980s saw ANGLICOs particularly 2nd ANGLICO operating at a high tempo. Between June 1982 and March 1984, the company supported 35 operations with U.S. Army and Allied nations, ranging from Arctic operations in northern Norway, exercises in the Mediterranean, TACP support for USN carrier wings in the Caribbean, and training operations with South American militaries. Additionally, elements of the company participated in sensitive peacekeeping operations in Beirut, Lebanon for the PLO evacuation and subsequently the multinational peacekeeping force. Second ANGLICO teams supported British, Italian, French and Lebanese army elements and engaged enemy targets on several occasions via USMC, USN and Lebanese supporting arms, including 16 inches naval gunfire from the USS New Jersey and 122 mm rocket fire from Lebanese Army BM-21 multiple rocket launchers. A second ANGLICO SALT officer conducted naval gunfire spotting from an A-6 intruder, the first time this had been done from this platform. 
Also, despite having nearly a third of its strength engaged internationally, for the first time in its history second ANGLICO deployed in support of 18th Airborne Corps for Operation Urgent Fury invasion of Grenada. This was also the first time an entire U.S. Army division, the 82nd Airborne Division was supported during combat operations. Second ANGLICO teams airlanded at Point Salines Airfield with the division's first elements and controlled USNLTVA-7 Corsair II aircraft in close air support and assisted in deconflicting indirect fires from Army units. During the mid to late 1980s, under Lt. Col. J. M. Wills and Lt. Gen. A. M. Gray, later Commandant of the Marine Corps, Second ANGLICO went through a period of refocusing on core skills, including regular live naval gunfire training with the USS Iowa battleship, and more frequent mass tactical exercises with the Army's 82nd Airborne Division. Additionally, the 2D ANGLICO began to train in low-intensity conflict response with weapon systems such as the Air Force AC-130 Spectre, Special Patrol Insertion, Extraction and Fast Rope Insertion Methods. In 1999, all active duty ANGLICO units first and 2D ANGLICO were deactivated, their responsibilities transferred to less effective marine liaison elements. The two reserve units, 3D and 4th ANGLICO, were the only ANGLICO units that remained and to this day are the only ANGLICOs that retain their jump mission and status as Goldwingers. In 2003, amidst the U.S. war in Iraq and global war on terror and a high operational tempo being demanded of the reserve ANGLICO units, 1st and 2D ANGLICO were reactivated although their status as jump units has never returned. Shortly thereafter, in 2004, 5th ANGLICO was formed. In 2008, ANGLICO began supporting combat operations in Helmand Province, Afghanistan, in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. A detachment from 2D ANGLICO was sent as part of SMAGTFA, and in 2009, a brigade platoon from 2D, followed by another from 1st and 3D, joined the 2nd Marine Expeditionary Brigade. In 2013, 6th ANGLICO was formed in Concord, California, with a 3rd Brigade Platoon Detachment at Joint Base Lewis McCord, Washington. In 2018, 6th ANGLICO relocated the HQ and a brigade platoon to Joint Base Lewis McCord, Washington. One of the command's three brigade platoons remains in Concord, California. <laughs> <laughs> Current units 6 ANGLICOs currently exist in the U.S. Marine Corps Currently, only the reserve ANGLICO units retain their jump missions. Topic. See also: United States Air Force Special Tactics Officer, United States Air Force Combat Control Team, 148 Battery Royal Artillery. Organization of the United States Marine Corps Johnny Michael Spann, the first American killed in action during the U.S. Invasion of Afghanistan in 2001 was a former member of 2nd ANGLICO.